Okay, um, hello everyone. Uh, our topic is topic for today's webinar is uh, managing the full API lifecycle. Um, so uh, the two of us uh, will be conducting today's webinar, and I'm Malin Tamarasinghe, uh, an associate technical lead from WS3 API Manager team, and uh, I am accompanied by uh, my colleague Kasun Tennakon, uh, who is also an associate technical lead from uh, WS3 API Manager team. So uh, in uh, today's webinar, uh, we'll be talking about uh, what is uh, full API lifecycle management and uh, why an organization needs to have a well-managed lifecycle for their APIs. And uh, we'll be going through uh, what are the essential pieces of a full API lifecycle management solution. And uh, WS3 API Manager uh, supports you to build a full API lifecycle management solution very easily and uh, will help you to get rid of, get rid of the nightmare of uh, managing APIs. And also, we'll take a typical business scenario or a typical uh, business API story uh, as the base of the webinar, and we'll take you through the story while uh, uh, solving the problems uh, coming through the journey. And uh, we'll think uh, we think it will make it uh, easy for everyone to understand the concepts of um, API lifecycle management. And uh, also, while uh, going through the webinar, we uh, encourage you to post any questions you get on the uh, on the questions tab. Uh, uh, so uh, we'll take questions at the end of the webinar, and also uh, we'll send you the webinar recording with the slide uh, via email uh, within a day after the webinar. Okay. So um, all right. Uh, what's the, uh, first of all, uh, what is uh, full? API lifecycle management. Um, a full API lifecycle management solution uh, should focus on the entire life, lifetime of an API uh, from the planning age, planning stage to its retirement. Um, so, uh, in the current uh, business world, APIs act as the as cornerstones of the business, and it's where the businesses uh, business is exposed to the outside world. And the APIs have become a first class citizen in business, uh, helping driving it forward and more open more re revenue sources through uh, monetization and et cetera. And APIs adoption uh, is widely increased through digital transformation. And, and these APIs are becoming also becoming uh, critical business assets as well. So uh, it's very critical to ensure security, uh, reliability, and uh, availability of the APIs through the business journey. And so that is where a full API management solution comes to the picture. So it will allow you to manage the relevant aspects of in aspects of APIs in any stage of the API lifecycle. Uh, and also one of the most recommended practices for any significant software development project is to use multiple environments, such as uh, isolated environments for development, QA, and production. And is in those instances, the API management solution should be a, should be should capable of uh, seamlessly migrating the changes mostly through uh, CI/CD process. And um, we'll go through the CI/CD aspects during the next week's session. Right. Uh, so in order to solve the issues uh, related to this uh, API lifecycle management. The API, the W3 API manager provides you a bunch of capabilities and uh, let's go through them in the next slide. Okay, uh, so um, W3 API manager supports a six state, six state lifecycle and we go through the, uh, and so this state will, states will cover the most important stages uh, of an API uh, from its inception straight to its uh, retirement. And also the API manager facilitates you to follow industry standard standards in uh, defining APIs and defining security and documenting and also to follow proper versioning practices and, uh, and also deprecating the old APIs as well. And also observing the API usage is also important. And for that, WS3 API Manager solution is comprised of an API analytics solution. And also the API Manager provides a CLI component, which uh, help you to build 
CI/CD pipelines for APIs to seamlessly propagate changes through the environment. Right. So, uh, okay. So then, uh, let's talk about API lifecycle related capabilities in WS API Manager. So, uh, as explained in the in the previous slide, so in there are six stages of the API lifecycle, which are created, prototype, published, blocked, and duplicated, and also retired. Uh, an API will always start start its journey from created state, and it it will finish the journey from the retired state. And the API will have different characteristics while it is in each state mentioned in this table. And so if we take about, if we take a prototype state, the API will be available in the developer portal for the application developers. And also the API will be available in the gateway, accessible in the gateway. And, but uh, in this prototype state, the API will be unmanaged. Because, uh, so, which means the API is not secured and it is not rate limited. So, anyone can access the API without any limits, uh, without using any token. So, that is uh, what we call a prototype API. Uh, so, an API in prototype state will be having these characteristics. So, uh, the next one is published. So, the API will be available in both dev portal and also the gateway. Uh, but this time, uh, unlike prototype APIs, the API will be managed APIs. The API will be a managed one, which means the API has security enforced and also rate limiting enforced. So, uh, so they are so uh, an application developer or an end user need to have a token, a valid token, to invoke the API, right? So uh, in the knock, in the next. Uh, the other, the next state in the table, which is block. So that is a temporary state that uh, API developers use to move the API in, in cases like um, security issues, things like that, so that uh, the API can be temporarily blocked from accessing uh, by the external people or the uh, end users. And in that state, uh, the, the API will not be available in the dev portal or the gateway. And also the deprecate in the deprecated state, uh, the API will not be available in the dev portal, but still the API will be accessible for earlier users. So the, the, the API is deprecated means they are, we are no, uh, the API developer is no longer encouraging people to subscribe with and do new developments on top of that deprecated API. So that which means the API will be retired very soon. So that there will be an alternative API or a new version, the API, the application developers should subscribe to and use for their new developments. So that is what we call a deprecated API. And also the last state, uh, the, once the API is in retired state, the, the API will not be available in either dev portal or it will not be it will not be accessible from the gateway as well. Right. Um, so. Okay, so the, uh, so we will be discussing a little bit about a demo, uh, de about a story, and so that is based on uh, right um, this uh, company, a, a small example company called uh, Altonica. So um, so uh, this demo session will explain you the characteristics of, of each API lifecycle states uh, in detail, and this base of the demo. At the base of the demo, as I explained, we are talk, we are taking this uh, sample organization, and we uh, so this uh, company is a retail company that sells um, mobile phones and accessories, and they are currently having a shop where people go and buy stuff physically. And now, uh, Altonica needs to expand its business by doing a small digital transformation and that is uh, building an online e-commerce application. Uh, the application will be powered by an API underneath. And so they have, so, so this company have, uh, has to develop both the API and the application uh, for this project. And they have, for that, they have hired a few, so let's, they have hired a few API and app developers, and they are planning to follow the API first approach for their development task. So for that, they have come up with the uh, initial uh, contract of the API. 
Okay, so um, uh, uh, so let's uh, go to the demo. Uh, I'll uh, invite Kasun to continue with the demo and while continuing the story. Okay, uh, so thank you, Malinda, for the great introduction. And uh, so let me give, uh, let me add to add something to what Malinda mentioned. Like, uh, so we have a, a hypothetical uh, organization called uh, Altronica. And they will, uh, they currently work on like they have physical stores and they are selling mobile phones to uh, whoever comes to visit to the store. And now they are, they are, they are expanding their business and they are uh, transforming into digital business now. And they are planning to uh, introduce a new mobile app. So from where users can order order mobile phones and then uh, and then get them delivered to their home. So uh, in order to do that, so they 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 are they have started their development with the uh, uh, they have first uh, draft their API interface or the uh, or the API definition using uh, Open API specification and uh, now uh, this is the uh, Open API specification uh, they have developed. So if we put it into uh, Swagger editor, so we can see that so they have this uh, devices order so uh, right now at the beginning so in on they they have only the contract so that's why we say so it is uh, contract uh, contract first approach they have taken so they don't have uh, an underlying implementation or the uh, things like that and they have also uh, mentioned the uh, security scopes and uh, all the things so let's uh, open the uh, WSO2 uh, API Manager Publisher portal. So now uh, we will uh, first uh, import this API definition into WSO2 API Manager Publisher. So now from this portal, uh, the Altronica API developers will uh, manage the APIs or design and develop the APIs and uh, push the APIs into a developer portal. And uh, we have a developer portal interface where the application developers, so in this case, Altronica mobile app developers could uh, come to developer portal and they can explore the APIs that are there, like and they can consume the APIs and uh, develop their mobile application. So let's start with the uh, publisher and uh, importing the API. So in API Manager, we have uh, uh, like a few options to create an API. So we will choose this. Uh, I have an existing REST API option and uh, I will uh, copy this URL. And so you can put give URL or you can do uh, open API file or URL. And uh, we will be using the uh, URL option here. And then uh, we will continue. And then uh, as the context, I will give a mobile store and they will keep the version as it is and then uh, endpoint and business plan we I will leave it blank because uh, for the endpoint we don't have an endpoint yet uh, because there is no uh, like they, they are still in the early stage of the project and they don't have any uh, endpoint yet and business plans uh, so we, this uh, API is planned to deploy as prototype so we don't need any business plan and uh, anyway the, the uh, mandatory options are here are the name, context, and the version. So let's go ahead and create the API. And now, just after you create uh, the API, you will be uh, redirected to this overview page. And now you can see that we have passed the created step, or the now we have created the API, and the API is in created state. And since we haven't provided any endpoint or business plan, now uh, to move forward, we need to give an uh, endpoint and uh, like to, to publish this as prototype, we don't need to provide the business plan, but uh, now we need to specify an endpoint. So let's go to endpoint page and see what other options that we have in the endpoint page. So now we have like a few options here and uh, out of these options, we will pick this prototype endpoint and prototype implementation. So with this method, so when you click add, so you can see that for all the operations uh, that the uh, API developer has defined in the specific, uh, defined in the API definition, now we have automatically generated a mock implementation 
for all these operations uh, like this so you you only have to like click save and then let's go to the life cycle page and in in this page this is the place where we manage the api life cycle so we will be coming to this uh, life cycle page time to time in during this demonstration and uh, we will go through this entire life cycle and uh, we'll uh, we'll explain uh, while uh, going through this state so right now we are at the creator state and in this uh, right hand and right hand side panel we can see what are the requirements that are need to be fulfilled in order to uh, transit to this uh, like from uh, this created state, we can go to either prototype or publish and uh, to uh, like uh, go to the prototype state, you need to specify prototype endpoint or implementation. So that is, we have already done that. So we can go to the deploy as prototype right now. But uh, yeah, and also we have option to publish uh, for that. Uh, we need to give business plan and, and an endpoint. So and then like uh, if I remind you again, like we, we now this is the first first phase of the uh, API development and it's the 0 0.9 version. And uh, now uh, the, uh, the API developers intention is to publish this as prototype. And so that after publishing it, uh, it app application developers can start developing their application based on this prototype API. And meanwhile, the API developer also continue the, continue their development on the actual backend so yeah so before before deploying this as prototype so let me go to the document because document are also the main part of the api so let's add a new document here so let me go back to the lab key and so i will copy this document name and then we'll copy this summary. So by the way, we will be sharing this uh, lab kit uh, repository with you uh, after like uh, after we conclude this uh, webinar, and uh, we will sh we will be sharing this uh, repository uh, URL with you. So and then uh, I'm going to put this content as the uh, document content. So we have few like uh, options here, like uh, you can specify what 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 is the type of this document, like uh, is it a how to type of or is it explaining a sample or is it containing a sample or SDK, public forums, support forums and or anything else. And the source also you can provide an inline implementation or you can put a markdown content, just what I'm going to do now and you can all give under URL or you can just upload any PDF or any file that you want. So let's continue and I will add to that content here. Oops. Uh, yeah, put that content here and uh, I will update the content. Okay, so now we have added the documentation for our API and now uh, let's go to lifecycle and uh, before that I will uh, also show you that so we have, uh, you can see that we have this scope mapping. So scope uh, associations that we are showing uh, for each, each of these operations, like uh, we have extracted those, those uh, security scope mappings into the API and uh, uh, we have uh, like added it to the uh, operations in the API manager, but uh, these uh, scopes will not be effective to like until we uh, publish the API because in the prototype state uh, uh, like uh, app developers can uh, invoke the APIs without uh, providing any uh, security credentials. So yeah, we will we will be discussing the, those things in the uh, in the uh, in, in later in later in the in the demo. So let's go ahead and uh, click the yeah deploy as prototype. So now the API has successfully, uh, um, like now, now I have promoted the lifecycle state of this API from created to prototype. So in now we have updated the diagram as well. And now you can see that from this prototype state, you can even come back to the, or demote to the created state, or you can uh, directly go to the published state. 
like after doing the endpoint and uh, this after specifying the endpoint production endpoint and give the business plan required so and also you can see in the below uh, we are uh, listing down the uh, history or life cycle uh, uh, state changes uh, and uh, you can see the user Paul has uh, changed the life cycle state of this API from created to prototype a few seconds ago so let's go to the developer portal now uh, if I refresh the page sorry yeah so now you can see the prototype API in the uh, um, API manager developer portal. So let's go inside the API and so you can see the uh, uh, the API owner and context and version and so on and so forth. So let's go to the tryout and let's try out this operation. So I will click try out and give some uh, device ID and execute so so I get this uh, 200 response from the uh, gateway so at this point now since we have prototype and we don't have actual backend so the request the the response is coming from the gateway from that uh, prototype implementation so API developer can specify or can so if you go back to the endpoint so here they can uh, they can uh, try the logic that they want to like uh, how, how they want to handle the prototype uh, api request or the how they want to handle the request uh, in here and uh, then they can uh, return whatever the uh, response they want so yeah so when when you first import the api we, we are like generating this code based on the examples that are defined in the open api definition Okay, so let's go back and now we get the response. So let me keep this API uh, running like um, yeah. So okay, so now uh, so this uh, demonstrate so this mimic the thing that the application developers are continuously using the API. So we are getting uh, API request uh, in every second. So let's keep this running as like that. And so we, let's go back to the publisher. So now we have the prototype API and now the application developers can use this prototype API from the, like they can uh, visit the developer portal and now this prototype API is available in the developer portal. So they can use this API and start developing their mobile app. So things are going well and uh, now while this is running like this uh, now we now we get the actual endpoint implementation or actual endpoint uh, URL from the uh, backend developers so let's uh, let's try to like uh, update the API with the actual endpoint uh, details so now let's uh, let's uh, assume that uh, we got the um, production endpoint and sandbox, sandbox endpoint uh, details from the uh, integration team or the backend team and now we want to update this API and uh, include those uh, parameters and uh, publish the API so to do that the uh, now we want to support the prototype now we want to support the app developers who are already using this app and we don't want to break their uh, like development or we, we don't want to hold like uh, hold their development so because of that we will be creating a new version from this 0 0.9 so we will be using as uh, like uh, using the version as 1.0.0 and create a new version so now what happened is we, we have created the new version out of this uh, that the old 0 0.9 and the just after creating the new version uh, the new api will be in the created state and if we go to the document so we, we can see that uh, all document or the document that we have attached to, to the 0 0.9 version is available in the 1.0 zero version as well 
and also if you go to here now we can see two apis now one one is in prototype state the and the other one the one we just created is in created state and let's go to the uh, now if we see the request so it's still request are like we are getting 200 okay and it's still the prototype api is running um, smoothly so there is no effect on that and if you go to the uh, uh, developer portal now uh, if you refresh the page now uh, still we don't we, we don't see any new apis here because we haven't uh, published that new version yet so it is in the created state so application developers are still not aware of that new api and now what we're going to do is now the endpoint is uh, endpoint here is marked as uh, like provided because uh, the this is a copy of that prototype api so if we go to the endpoint page so it says the uh, endpoint implementation is prototype now we will be switching to this uh, http and http rest endpoint and enables this production and sandbox and we will provide the uh, production url and the sandbox url in the endpoint configuration so these are the actual backend of this api and this is the sandbox and i will click here okay so now uh, if you go to the lifecycle page now you can see that this business plan is not uh, yet, uh, we haven't specified any business plans yet so let's go there and we'll select some business plans here and we we'll click save so so these business plans will be available to application developer when they subscribe to this api from the application like uh, when they subscribe this api to the to their application so let's click same and go back to the life cycle uh, life cycle page okay now we are good to go now we have provided the endpoint and we have selected the business plan and let's click publish okay so now we have uh, published the api and in this state the available transitions are we can go to block state or we can go to deprecate or we can deprecate this api or even we can go back to the created state and just like the previous case we, we this uh, life cycle state transition uh, history record will be uh, added and let's again go back to that prototype api and it's 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 going normal it's uh, like uh, even publishing this new api doesn't have any impact on the prototype api and it's working and let's go to the uh, developer portal so now uh, we can see this prototype let's uh, refresh the page okay okay when i refresh the page now you can see that the prototype api is not uh, not visible anymore now the now what we have here is the latest version which is 1.0.0 so what we are normally doing is when uh, we create a new version from a old version and publish that api we uh, we we only see, we only show the latest api of of that um, uh, latest version of that api so still that deprecated api is there in the gateway and it's working like if we go, go here like you can see that it's still responding to the api request but it is not visible in the developer portal but there is a configuration you can enable uh, to to say that okay i want to see all the api versions in the de developer portal so the applications that are like uh, in the development stage or so now uh, now until we publish this new api or the version 1.0 with the actual backend the application developer or the mobile developer only has this uh, prototype api and they even uh, like uh, it's not fair to break their development stage uh, because of we have published a new version so that's why we are not breaking the uh, prototypes prototype api uh, functionality and it's working and we now we have successfully published this api so let's uh, go there go go to the uh, api and uh, now when we go to the tryout section now it uh, requires to provide like now we we, we we are 
asked to provide an access token here. So let's go to the applications and uh, create a new application. So let's give it a name as uh, Altronica Mobile App. app. Uh, I will copy this name and put it here. And let's give it uh, unlimited quota and click save. Yeah, now we can go to this uh, or to token section and generate a fee. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to invoke this API and uh, show you how it works. Let's go back to the API and go to try out. And let's paste it here. And uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So we need to subscribe first. Sorry, I missed that one. So we, when you go to the API, there is a section called subscriptions, and uh, there you can uh, select the applications that you want to subscribe, and you can select the uh, business plan or the throttling policy, and click subscribe. And now only you can actually uh, use this uh, application access token uh, to invoke the API. And okay, let's generate a token here, generate an access token, and you have to select the scopes that you want to allow for this uh, access token, and then copy the token and go to the tryout page. And I will paste the token here. And uh, let's try out this one. Try it out. Execute. Okay, so then we get the response as, uh, like we get the 200 response with this uh, uh, response body. So this, this, this response is actually coming from the backend uh, that we used in the, uh, this version 1.0.0 uh, API. So let's uh, copy this URL and the uh, token and uh, let's uh, keep that API also running. And so I can show you that. Uh, uh, let's Okay, and let's copy the access uh, token as well. Um, authorization header and JWT. Okay. So we will uh, keep uh, getting this API request the gateway and uh, then we could uh, demonstrate some uh, uh, effect on uh, some other lifecycle state uh, like while this is running. Okay, so now we, we have uh, the prototype API response coming in this here and we have the uh, published API response coming in here. Okay, so let's go back to the API publisher and uh, so let me summarize to this point. Now we have uh, two APIs in the API publisher. One is in the prototype stage which we created uh, in the, at, at the first, first place like we created the 0 0.9 version and then we created a new version out of the 0 0.9 and we uh, give the version as 1.0.0 and now it is in the published state and the earlier one is in prototype state and if you go to the developer portal you can see the latest version of the mobile store api which is 1.0.0 now and now we, 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 yeah, we can see that uh, request are uh, serving um, like smoothly in the gateway and both the uh, prototype and publish api uh, is working so now things are going well and uh, but things are not like uh, not going well uh, 
as uh, smooth forever like even in the lives it's not a like a smooth and comfortable right right all the time so in, in the api also, also we sometimes get uh, some trouble with the um, like backend performance or security or whatever so let's uh, in, in in our scenario also the electronica backend team and or the electronica security team uh, um, like uh, notify the uh, a api developer team that they have found a security vulnerability in this mobile store api backend and they were asked to like uh, hold all the requests coming to the gateway and uh, they were basically asked to uh, get the api out of out from the uh, system so the, the the api developer teams or the the api developer who are using the api manager has an option here now. Now we have a lifecycle state called blocked. So the API designer or the API developer can transfer their API or can uh, move their API to block state to temporarily block the API request coming to or coming uh, or passing through the gateway to the backend. And also, when you change the lifecycle state to block, we will be removing the API from the developer portal and new uh, we and uh, the uh, users can't subscribe to the, that api any longer so let's see the effect of, of this uh, change now this is the published api and let's change it to the block state okay now the api is in block stage and uh, if you go to the uh, Just uh, give us a minute. Yeah, let, let's let's stop this repeating and I will just uh, yeah yeah I think it's stuck here. Let me move it again. Okay, so yeah the, the, the command was stuck there. So now uh, if we uh, invoke the API, we get this uh, 503 service unavailable and we send this uh, message in the payload. API is blocked and uh, this API has been blocked temporarily. Please try again. So if the app developer or the mobile app developer has uh, handled this uh, 503 response from the REST API, so they would have shown a, like a graceful or a, a message in the mobile app saying that service is temporarily out of order. So now the API request is blocked at the gateway. And uh, now let's go to the developer portal and see what's the effect. Yeah, yeah. So now when we refresh the page, now the old version or the version 0 0.9 is back because the version 1.0 is blocked. So now you can't uh, subscribe to that API any longer. Or you can't uh, see that API from the developer portal. So now like from the block stage, also, you can go back to the published state, or if, if you uh, like uh, fix that security issue, or like if you figure out a way to uh, overcome that issue, then you can go back to publish, or you can, if you if you, if you are unable to find any solution, then you can deprecate and then you can retire the API. Now, let's assume that in, in the Adronica case, they, they were able to figure out the uh, problem and they, the, they have fixed the issue, and now they want to. Uh, uh, reopen the API or re republish the API. So they can uh, click on republish. And so now it is back to the published state. So you can see the uh, see the lifecycle state changes in the history. And uh, so if you go back to the API, so you can see now it is returning 200. Okay. So just a few seconds ago, like we got this 503 service unavailable response while the API is in the block state. and after we republish it, uh, we uh, 
like we 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 are we are getting back the 200 OK response, and then uh, and then see what's the state stating in the developer portal. So if we go to the developer portal, yeah. So now the API version 1.0.0 is back. So now back to normal. So just like that. So in case if you want to temporarily take out the API from the gateway or API from the API management system, you can just put it into the block state. You don't need to delete it or you don't need to um, like be more to create. So that is why we have the block state. So you can go to block, like, like you can block the API and then uh, again uh, 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 publish it back to the API gateway. Right. So now uh, let let me summarize to the to this point. Now, uh, now we have uh, mobile store API two versions in the publisher. One is 0 0.9, and the latest one is 1.0.0. It is now in published state. We have we temporarily blocked it now, but now we, we have restored that to publish. And if you go to the developer portal uh, there we can only see the latest api which is 1.0.0 and we we are getting api request to that uh, api and yeah things are going going normal and going smoothly so now uh, let let assume that uh, this uh, altronica business has evolved like uh, like after since they have moved to this digital uh, business or digital uh, platform like they they have uh, they they receive a lot of uh, orders from the customers and they have a wide variety of like they have a, they have increased their reach and <clears throat> sorry so they 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 have in, you know, like developed their business and now they are into the mobile phone accessories business as well so if we go to the mobile store API and if we go to the resource now now there there are like uh, few operations here now currently they only have mobile devices mobile device get by id and these operations and now they want to add new operation to manage the accessories mobile accessories basically to list down available accessories and if they want if uh, a user want, if a customer want to order new accessory then they can uh, place an uh, place uh, an order through the mobile app so to do that, they they have like uh, now they have already updated the, the API definition, and the API developers has updated the definition, and now they want to uh, add it to the API. So the just like in the uh, normal library library development. So now we if we uh, to a library if you add a new feature, normally we increase the uh, uh, version and then uh, publishes it that uh, it has a new version. So same here, same thing apply to here. So even for the API, so if you want to add a new operation, like um, since this API is now it, 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 it's going well and we don't want to change anything in here, but we what we do is we create a new version and let's name it as two zero zero and then uh, just like before when just after creating a new version it is uh, put into the created state and if you just to uh, confirm yeah if you go to the developer portal there is no change because this is new this new version is in created state and if you go to the runtime uh, the, the the old version is working as expected and nothing has changed so now uh, the API developers has developed the next version of the API and it is uh, version is 2.0.0. Now we want to import this definition into this new version. Now let me go back to the distinct page to make it clear. Now we have three versions here, 0 0.9, 1.0.0 and the, the latest one is 2.0.0 which is we just created. So let's go to the um, API definition page. And now what we want to is now still uh, uh, the API having the old resources. Now, if you go to the resource page, now we don't, you can see that uh, accessories resource in here. So we need to update this API with the new API definition. 
So again, we have option here to use an uh, use a URL or or file. So I will use the URL option here, and let's copy it and paste it, and we do we do the validation and then let's import. Okay, now we have import the new definition. Let's go to the resource, and now you can see that new resource is there or the new operation is there. Accessories, and you can get the accessories, and you can. Uh, place and place an order to uh, uh, accessories. So, you, you can order new accessories through this uh, uh, this operation. So now uh, still this is in created state, but now we have update or modified the uh, resources. And uh, let's let's uh, go to the document page and yeah. So we can still see that document is there because we have. Copied, we have copied the uh, API from 0.9 to 1.0 and 1.9 to 0. So this is the same API getting evolved with the like like the business get evolved, the API also get evolved over time. So now let's go to the lifecycle state and uh, then uh, now now we have two APIs here, two APIs. Now 1.0 is also here and the 2.0 is also is about to be published. So now what we want to do is since this 2.0 is there or 2.0 is going to publish, we want to deprecate this 1.0 version because uh, the new version is uh, released. So we have an option here that we can deprecate all version after publishing this new version. So the, if we select this option and click publish, it will automatically deprecate the old version and also if we like omit this option, this requires resubscription when publishing the API. Uh, if you like, if you do not check this one, then the previous subscriptions for this uh, version one API will be automatically migrated to the version two. So to show that, let's go to this Altronica application. And if we see the, like uh, in the subscriptions, we can see the, what are the available subscriptions for this application? Now, currently we only have mobile store version one, and then uh, and it is in published state, and uh, we are using that one. And from the API developer, he is about to publish a new API, and he can choose whether he want to migrate, he want to like uh, smoothly transfer the previous uh, subscription to this new version. So then they can uh, application developers will have less hassle on uh, like resubscribing to the newer version and then uh, like doing, doing things like that. So we will deprecate the old version and we will publish this API. Okay, now this is in publish state and uh, yeah, we, we, uh, we came to this state earlier in the version one and. So let's see the state now. Okay, now we have prototype, deprecated, and published. So three three versions are in three state, and uh, the latest version is published, and it is 2.0.0. So let's go to the uh, developer portal, and also let's I will I will show you how how it get to the runtime. So if we go to the runtime, so we can still see that. Uh, I think it's again start. Let me. Uh, yeah. So this uh, previous version is still working. Now we are sending request to this version 1.0. So it is still responding. Like it, it's still working, even though, as Malinta mentioned earlier in the introduction, like even the API state is uh, moved to the deprecated. That doesn't mean that we are removing the API from the gateway. Like still the application is working because the Still, that some most probably pointing to this uh, 1.0 version, and users can use it. Now, let's go to the developer portal, and now we speed refresh the page. So now the latest version is 2.0.0, and you can't see any older versions in here, like because in naturally what we want to do is for new new users. So let's say if uh, a new sorry, application developer log into the developer portal and what we want them to do is they want we want them to subscribe to the latest version we don't want to subscribe them to uh, older version which, which is missing some uh, operations 
So that's why when, when we publish the uh, 200 and when we uh, deprecate the old version, combining both, like we will only show the latest version in the developer portal. So now if we go to the applications and if you go to Electronica mobile app, you can see that the version two is already subscribed. Like we didn't click, like we didn't uh, go here and go to subscription and select the application and subscribe. It has automatically subscribed to the application because the API developer or the API publisher said that he want to transfer the previous subscriptions for the uh, this new version as well. And now you can see that the old version is deprecated. So now if the application developer or the this Antonica mobile app developer comes to the subscription page, now they know that okay, I, I want to I want to uh, remove this, I want to uh, remove using this version, this old version because it is deprecated now and at some point or at some point in the uh, future that the API developer will retire this API um, like uh, uh, soon or later. So then they can uh, smoothly migrate to the version 2. Uh, now we go back to here and now this is in publish and let's go to the 1.0 again and if you go to the life cycle now uh, we have we, we didn't click deprecated here what we did was when we published the latest version 2.00 we say mentioned that okay deprecate the old version and uh, uh, this old version which is 1.0.0 has been deprecated and if you, if you look at the uh, at here now this is still in prototype because uh, there is no transition from prototype to deprecated now basically we can't uh, deprecate prototype APIs and now uh, now we can um, let, let's assume that we, we have given enough time for the app developers to transfer to the new version and anyway if you go to the developers or new developers new app developers like if someone if the if the Antronica decide to uh, develop a new web application and then uh, uh, if the web, web developer comes here and they, they will subscribe to the version 2 not to the old version and so uh, by the time like uh, by the like after giving a, a grace period api publisher can uh, move this to retired state so let's see now still we are working the version one and then uh, let's move the retired state so that brings the and brings us to the end of this API's lifecycle. So now we have gone through all the states here. Now the, every API is start with created, and then we can uh, uh, promote it to prototype, or we can uh, promote it to publish, and then we temporarily block it uh, because of the security issue, and then we again uh, publish the API, and then we deprecate the API when we uh, publish the new version of this API, which is version 2.0.0. And then we allow the users to transfer to the new version uh, we, we give a little bit time. And then finally we retire the API. So now this API is actually uh, uh, for the, the app, is uh, sitting there for uh, uh, auditory purpose. So archive, we have archive, we can archive this API if you want. Now, if we go back, we can see that prototype API is still there, and the version one API has gone through, like it has completed its entire life cycle, and it's in the retired state. And now, the active API is API version 2.0.0. And uh, yeah, I think this is start again. Yeah. So if we send the request now, we get this 404 request as response. Earlier we get 200. Now after we time the API, we, the API is no longer there in the gateway, and we are getting this 404, which is uh, the API is not found, the, the service is not found. And so that brings us to the uh, yeah. So end of this demo as well. So let's go back to the slide. Yeah. So. So if you have any questions now, uh, you can ask them now. Um,
yeah we, we are we are getting some questions so yeah so uh, so one of the questions uh, how to remove or archive retired api so basically uh, we can remove a retired api by there's a delete button so if you create if you click on the delete button uh, you can remove the api api entirely so actually uh, the when the api is retired this is it is kind of already archived so uh, so the only thing is we can delete the api yeah like this yes uh what is the time duration for a deprecated api to retire uh, how users how users are notified uh so actually there is no uh, specific time duration uh, so that is actually the uh, decision of the API developer to make it uh, um, deprecated to retire. Uh, so basically, the the application develop the application developer should uh, be given enough time to migrate uh, from the deprecated API to the uh, uh, correct new API. And uh, uh, so if if you want to notify the users, so there are some extension points in api manager so it's like uh, lifecycle change uh, extensions um, so that uh, we can write any kind of uh, some code so like uh, sending emails things like that to notify the users uh, another question uh, is it possible to disable the application security for an api yes uh, it is possible so um, so basically uh, it is it applies to published apis so here, uh, if you go to the resources section, so there is uh, this security. So there is a tech security uh, switch so that you can disable it so that uh, this API can be invoked, that particular resource can be invoked without any token. So uh, so currently we need to enable to disable that in, in all the uh, resources. Can the uh, lifecycle states be changed? Uh, can more states be added or some states? Uh, can't see the question completely. I guess uh, it should be like uh, some state that can be added or some state that be removed, I think. Uh, so, okay, yeah. So it is possible. So there is a documentation that uh, we uh, uh, have published so that you can follow to customize the uh life cycle state so that you can uh at you can um add or remove existing states or things that you can it is possible to uh yeah we also uh, get a question saying uh hi when api is in deprecation state what response give the api https http code yeah so it, it it's the uh 200 like even uh like uh, even the API is in a deprecate, even the API is deprecated, we still uh, serve the API request from the gateway and we still uh, return 200. If the backend returns 200, then uh, we will return 200. We, we are not blocking the API, um, even like uh, even if you put it to deprecation state. Yeah, so we have another question uh, how do we expose the api to the outside world is it through the same manager so i think he means uh, api manager so uh, yeah so it's kind of uh, it's better to have so it is possible to ex ex uh, expose the api from the api manager itself to the outside so the the entry points entry point is the api manager itself but uh, uh, as a bit better practice uh, we are usually fronting an api manager from a load balancer so that uh, actually the client is front uh, client is calling the load balancer and then uh, the load balancer is calling the api manager so that is uh, the practice we are following in the development in the deployments uh, this wso2 uh, open banking platform has pre-built APIs. Can you give us some insights of the open banking platform comparing with uh, API manager? 
uh, yeah, so I think uh, it's, uh, it's kind of uh, better that uh, if we can check with the open banking team. So as uh, far, of, far as we know, so there are some APIs that are uh, kind of, uh, that are pre-built with the, op uh, the open banking system. Uh, uh, it's like kind of uh, some open banking standard related APIs. So there are several standards like uh, uh, in Europe and so things like that. So yeah. Uh, okay. So I think uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Good to yeah. Uh, yeah. So I think uh, that's it for the uh, from the questions. Uh, okay. Let's continue. So. So you can uh, download the API manager distribution from this uh, our website wso2.com slash API manager and then uh, try this out and we will share this lab kit uh, repository with you uh, in, in, uh, in just uh, as soon as possible and you can also join so you can also join uh, to our slack channel uh, and uh, also check out our github repositories and uh, if you have any infection or if you found any issues, then you can uh, report them in this uh, WSO2 product API repository. And uh, yeah, demo materials are in this location. Anyway, I think we will be sharing this uh, material uh, with the with you uh, in, 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 in the in while. So and uh, and also uh, we. We have some uh, like uh, upcoming sessions like this, and the uh, you can uh, get information about the upcoming events from if you visit wsw.com/events. You can uh, get you know about those events, and uh, we have a small uh, question here uh, with, with very very few questions. Uh, if you could spend some time on like if you could spend few seconds maybe a few minutes on that and give us some feedback so we can uh, improve ourselves and we can uh, uh, we can like uh, do better webinars in the future so that's it i think we can wind up the webinar for today thank you very much <laughs>